And now, coming at you from the Five Star Physique Studio in Knoxville, Tennessee, this is The Drop Set with your host, Darren Starr. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 187 of The Drop Set. Uh, I'm Darren Starr, you know that, and I'm here with the uh, the boss lady in chief, Kelly Lynn Nyokas. How you doing? Good. You got that right. Thank you. I was practicing all morning. I kept saying it in front of the mirror to myself to make sure I got it right. So I was going to feel like a total idiot if I screwed it up after that much practice. How did you get that right? I'm really impressed. Well, you told me last time and I still screwed it up. So you, you don't think that's been ticking away in my brain ever since then? I think so. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure that's all consuming. Yeah. So um, does your uh, production assistant over on your end, does she have a bottle of champagne we can crack open? Because there's a moment that we need to celebrate here. And you are. She left the room. She left the room. <laughs> all right. You have, you have water or something we, we can toast from afar? Uh, because you are at this point right now officially the very first ever repeat guest on the drop set. Are we? Am I really? Yes. Okay. So cheers to you. Thank you. I'm gonna drink. Have a drink. Yeah, let's do it. Tap it. Mm. I think that's for a shot. I'm not sure. Hey, I don't know. I don't do enough shots. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, and I'm done. That's it. <laughs> I'm right. No. <laughs> uh, so for anybody who missed it uh, last time you were on here, first of all, shame on you. You're a disgrace to the human race. You can do better. You need to do better. But um, you're my coach. You're my posing coach as well. And uh, you do posing for a lot of my clients as well. I send a lot of them your way. I'm extremely grateful for all of the above. Yes. <laughs> well, so are we also extremely grateful for your guidance. So thank you. Thank you. Well, so no, thank you. You're, you're, you're coming at this and you're bringing like 20 plus years of experience with you. So, you know, that's, right. that's a lot of stuff. You've seen a lot of stuff. Like I remember um, when we were posing earlier this week and I mentioned on my um, leg workout, it was either was it earlier that day or the day before. And I mentioned that I was in the middle of a set and I started getting like a little bit of blurry vision and you just immediately started going off for like three minutes on auras and migraines and stuff like this. And you were just talking like way over my head. I'm like, okay. So it's like, that's the kind of stuff It's just in your head and it's valuable stuff. Like that's good insight. And it just kind of shows what your background is. And it's not just all like muscle and fat loss, but there's a lot more that goes into helping somebody kind of manage their body and get better with it. Yeah. I think it's like just the experience of working with different people and then like my own issues and, you know, just talking to doctors through things and just having a good network of people to ask, you know, if somebody gets in like lightheaded. The first thing people think it's going to be is their blood sugar most of the time, but it can also be like you were, we were talking about central nervous system mm -hmm. issues. You know, when you're under a lot of stress in the gym blood or pressure, low, low yeah, blood, blood pressure, pressure related. Yeah. yeah. Breathing, breathing yep. incorrectly, yep. you know, or holding your breath. Yep. You, <laughs> you might die. No, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> don't want to do that could be a lot of things that means you're about to die could be a stroke could be a stroke yeah yeah you know, the warning signs you should know all the time everybody should yeah if you smell burning hair that's a bad sign right yeah that would be a fire <laughs> and so um, um speaking speaking of your own experience with issues do you want to talk about your issues my issues currently yeah, because so the, the leading question that you suggested I ask is, hey, why aren't you competing this year? So there's a story behind that. Well, I'm not saying it's an exciting I, story, but there is a story. Well, at one point in time in my life, I probably would have been stupid enough to try to push through everything that I feel. But because I have enough body awareness, my I have a feeling, a sensation of uh, there's a pulling sensation, sometimes pressure, maybe a nerve pinched down towards like where they, where they would consider an inguinal hernia or possibly a femoral hernia. Like inside um, of the I've, leg, below the hip. I've had, but I've had that even in show pictures, you can see, you know, there's like lymph nodes, but I've been told it's a hernia. Some, some of them have told me that it's lymph nodes. I don't know. Um, I haven't had pain there, but now I'm starting to feel a pressure. Um, so when I was doing leg press and lunges one day, I noticed that I have an issue uh, uh, of the pulling sensation. So I 
went to the doctor, had them look at me. They sent me to a CT scan. So they're still doing tests. I don't think they, they did the CT scan where they should have done it, like lower. Yeah. Um, because if it's in the inguinal area or whatever, they probably didn't hit that. That's what they told me. So Wednesday, I'm going to get looked at. But I don't want to push it to where I feel like I'm going to have some permanent issue with, you know, a hernia that I have to get surgery like tomorrow. I'd rather get looked at, get it done. And I don't want to have something more severe happen if I did pre- push legs when I'm feeling pressure or yeah. pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do feel pain. Yeah. And so I, I guess this, this actually leads us to a good discussion and that's like, you know, training through this kind of stuff. And at what point does it become a problem? So, right. um, for you, you're still capable of training legs, but probably not in the way that you feel like you normally do, or you want to, or you need to, in order to be competitive at the level you're at. Correct. Okay. I mean, pro level is really tough, you know, so. And you can't half ass your way through leg like workouts and be, be okay. To... Right. Like, and that's the thing. Like, I feel like I can get around it. I mean, COVID let us get around a lot of stuff too. I mean, I worked out from home most of the time. So, or from the, um, at the park, but I came up with different things. The thing is, is like, I can't do a leg press. So anything that can mimic that movement is, is like irritates that area. So I can Which would also be movement. like a, a squat. Yeah, it could be. It feels almost like, um, it, it also involves my hip flexor too. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if it's hip flexor, if the psoas, I don't know what it is, but there's something down there that's being pinched. So I can't, I mean, I can do leg extensions. I can do leg curls, lying leg curls. I can do deadlifts. Surprisingly, I'm surprised that that's not irritating it, which is really weird, Mm -hmm. but I can't leg press and I can't lunge. So it's definitely something that's pulling in that area. So most most of your compounds are out then. Yeah, that's what's really frustrating because, I mean, I just feel like because, of, you know, being a bodybuilder, you want to squat and lunge and do stuff like that. Or step ups, I can't do either. I can't do anything that's like bending the, the knee. It's yeah. really weird. Yeah. But so I can do a hinge movement. I don't know. If there, if there was a show, let's say, you know, there, there was a show in December that you had your eye on. And you're like, for some reason, like may, maybe the, the prize for first place was like it is for Wings of Strength here. They're doing like a car or something like that. And you're like, man, I got a chance at that. I think I can do that. And there was just some kind of draw that was pulling you into that show. And you're like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to prep for that. And I'm just going to like, you know, do what I can with the legs and call it good. Do you think you would trust yourself to stick to that? Or do you think that competitive desire is going to kick in and make you do shit that you know you probably shouldn't? Like I said, if, if I was in a mindset where I was not thinking smart um, or thinking more like extreme and taking that risk, I probably would. But I've realized over the years that like, even like last year, I'm, I'm going to say this, like I pushed myself pretty hard during COVID because it, it just gave you like a a feeling of like meaning because we were so secluded. So like the control. Yeah. You needed that escape. So like that gave me motivation, but this year COVID isn't as like prevalent as like, you know, like you're not in lockdown right now. So it's, you can go to the gym, you can push yourself, but I also know like I'm getting older. I don't want to put my body through the ringer so that a couple of years down the road, I can't do anything. Like, I, yeah. I don't want to not be able to even do a leg extension, you know. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to, like, you know, de- like debilitate myself. Yeah, yeah. So you you feel like you uh, where, where you're at now, um, you, you know when to pump the brakes and you're comfortable with that. I mean, you kind of have to be if you're coaching yourself because no one else is going to do it for you. Right. And you know what, like everything that's going on in the industry, um, like I made a post the other day, I, I feel like sometimes when you get into that extreme mindset and you can't break free of that, you know, at times when you're younger, you think you're invincible. And then you realize like, as you get older, you have to kind of listen to your body a little bit more than you, than you want to. And you have to stop letting your mind say, Hey, if I don't do this show this year, everything's going to fall apart, like, you know, or your whole life's coming to an end. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Like you, you can, you can goal set, but you don't have to go extreme where you feel like 
if you don't achieve this goal this year or this time, it's over. You know, right. I think that's the difference in my mindset now that I used to have. Yeah. Well, I mean, with, with age comes wisdom with any luck and hopefully, <laughs> and you are older now. In fact, you just had a birthday. I did. So happy belated birthday. You're now 27. I'm now 50. <laughs> 50. Man. I feel like it. <laughs> well, I, the, yeah. The, the, the hernia or whatever it is probably doesn't help. It doesn't make you feel any younger. I'm sure. No, I feel like I've lived like so many lives. It's so crazy. <laughs> um, I got some questions from people and uh, yeah. some, some of them are kind of good. You want to dive in? Surprisingly. <laughs> people did, actually ask me questions. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you get any questions? No, I, I did. But those were for Alexa. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> You're welcome, Alexis. <laughs> Someone failed. I like how I, I post something on my Instagram story with a box where you can type in a question and somehow somebody clicks over to your profile and sends you a message asking you a question for somebody else. Yeah, why? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I'm trying to make it easy, people. I really do. I try. And that, it's just like, you're, you're pissing in my face. It's like, you just, no, no, none of your efforts are good enough, Darren. So anyway, to a random person out there that did that, I expect better from you. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Th this is an interesting one. And I'm curious to hear your perspective on this because I could have very easily asked this question myself. How do you get over the fear of taking pictures of yourself, putting yourself out there in social media? How do you get over the fear of putting yourself out in social media? Yeah, like if you're, if you're just not comfortable, I, I mean, there could be a lot of reasons for this. And I, let me share my own experience here. Like, okay. You um, feel like wherever your physique is at, it's not really good enough to share with other people. You don't feel like you take a good photo or if you do, like the quality of them kind of sucks. That's my issue. Like I can never get them looking good enough. I'm like, who the fuck wants to see this? Um, or, you know, the, the fear of getting judged or worse, ignored or what happens to me every time I post a, a selfie or something like that or a, a posing picture, just seeing how many people unfollow you after that. It's like, oh, ouch, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> hard not to take that personally. So those are the reasons why you might have some kind of fear over that. So I think there's an obvious answer know. here, but what do you think? How do you get over that? Wisdom. Wisdom. Do you want to impart some oh, wisdom to us? Here's the wisdom, right? <clears throat> so basically you people don't care as much as you think they do. Hey, <laughs> this is true. B, it's true. <laughs> So people don't care as much as you think they do. So when people post selfies a lot, and I've you know done that in the past too, um, I'm posting maybe because I feel, I don't know, like it's funny that day, or maybe I made a face. I used to do like selfies where I take pictures and I do stupid faces. And then I look back now and I get memories on Facebook. I'm like, why did I post that? <laughs> but like, I don't even know why I posted it. But then, you know, and then there's times where you feel proud of yourself and then you take a picture because you're like, wow, I really can't believe I look like that in the mirror. And at that moment in time, it's really all about how you feel. So like you're posting it because you're proud of yourself. I don't care what this person thinks. That's what the difference with me. I don't care what they think. And sometimes people perceive it like, okay, you're looking for attention. It's like sometimes you're, you're, you're not looking for attention. You're actually like proud and you find it, you're inspired. So you're thinking other people are going to be inspired too, because you could sometimes be inspired by your own achievements. And I think that's like, it's like this, like, like I was talking to clients about intrinsic motivation and like needing accolades from people. A lot of times, because I have that intrinsic motivation as you do too, otherwise you wouldn't be able to continue on a journey and getting in shape if you didn't have self-motivation too. Yeah. Like that's why you don't have to post because you do pull out of your own motivation from inside. And of course, for me, because I'm really good at <laughs> of course. giving that motivation. You're the ultimate yeah. hype man. I'm such a hype person. Yep. <laughs> well, and I think, I I think part know. of it also is you know, just remember like what social media is there for. It's there for you to put yourself out for whatever reason in whatever way you want. So one of the things that I have to tell myself all the time is stop overthinking it. Just be who you are. And if who you are is some guy with an average physique who takes shitty pictures, Great. There you go. Be you. Yeah. That's a, and I think that that's my, like my whole journey, like growing up, I, I, um, was a performer when I was younger. So I didn't know why I thought it was cool when my mom would take the camera out and I was like, 
smile for the camera, whatever. <laughs> and I would like, I could look back at pictures. I'm like, how did I just know to, to pose for a picture? I was never taught that. But I think that like, as I've gotten older, I, I kind of just, the performer comes out of me regardless if it's a picture or not. Not everybody's like that. So some people mm -hmm. are very, you know, they're just, they don't like to be in front of the camera. They don't like to talk in front of the camera. You like to talk in front of the camera. You like to play music for people. You enjoy your music. I don't you like to talk in front of the camera. You do. You're doing no. it right now. You're I, I do. Right I now. do this because because current trends expect podcasts to be on YouTube as well as Spotify. So I don't like. I would Welcome love to do this whole thing just like this. I'd be totally cool doing the whole podcast like this. I'd be fine with that. Uh oh, did I lose you? Are you still there? Yeah, You're hanging in there. You good? Or you could do the whole Millie Vanilli thing. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 what might be worth a shot. Might might want to experiment with that. You having connection issues? Connection issues over there? Hang tight, everybody. We're fixing this. Darren. Hey, there you, you right? go. You back? Okay. Yeah, I'm back. I, I I never went anywhere. You didn't? No. Okay, I no. did. Probably her. She's got two Wi-Fi's here, so. Oh, okay. All right. Tricky, tricky. You know who else is is really good at that, and it's it's unfortunate for me is my wife. Like, it is impossible for her to take a bad picture. And when somebody's getting a, a camera out ready to take a shot, like she goes through this quick routine. It's like a half a second where she goes from being totally relaxed to posed for a photo, and I'm standing there next to her like, just an idiot. And so like. I don't even want to be in a photo with her because it's like, you know, it, it's better if it's just you. Like, all I'm going to do is ruin it. Like, she always takes a great one. And I don't know if I've ever taken a good photo in my life. Like, face. I don't know what to do with my face. So It's um, self-awareness. Like, you have to, when you're in the mirror, you have to, like, get your angle right, right? You have to, like, find where you feel like you look the best. Yeah. In your eyes. Yeah. In your eyes. Yeah. And if you, you know, you have to have that self-awareness. You don't have to stare at yourself all the time in the mirror, but you just figure out your own angles where you feel like you look the best. So then that, when you're in a photo, you can just pop into that, that pose. One, one thing you will notice if you, if you scroll through social media also, like of the vast majority of people who regularly post pictures of themselves always do it in either the same location or the same one to three poses. That's it. Like they got their money pose and they always go back to it in the same spot. And self-awareness I, I don't really want to do that though i'm like that seems kind of boring and kind of like playing it safe like i'm not the most adventurous guy in the world but i don't know that seems a little cheap to me yeah i think it's just people's safety zones though i feel yeah. like they they have their safety you know they feel like that's how they want to be portrayed that's how they want to be perceived so they find their best attributes or whatever and then they just kind of go with that yeah feel safe. yeah all right well i'm just going to do all triceps all the time that's all i got I think I think that your forearms are better. For okay, my 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 Instagram page is now de dedicated entirely to forearms. That's all it is. That's all it is. Because here's the joke: because Darren said that everybody compliments his forearms, and he barely mm. works them. I've okay. never worked them. See, it's like my calves. Yeah, <laughs> you've you've worked your calves. Shut up. I have worked my calves, but it's like you know my whole life that yeah. they've come up in there. Well, a dance background kind of helps with that too definitely helps yeah yeah um next question here, here here's one for you so you've been there before so what is your biggest piece of advice for a new ifbb pro biggest piece of advice for a new ifbb pro is first of all be proud of yourself that you became a pro um that's you know something very prestigious to reach in this industry and so realize you belong there. I think that's a big deal to realize you belong there. Because sometimes, you know, you get that card. And once you stand there with these people that you've been watching, you feel like, oh, my God, do I really belong here? I, I, am I really, do I match that type of physique? You know, I think that's another thing. It's like you start from ground zero and you have to realize you're, you're brand new. So you need to go with yourself and just realize where you've gotten. and just take that first year in like that first pro debut year. Enjoy that hundred percent. That's what I feel. 
I like it. Realize you real realize that you belong there. I think a lot of people that get into it, they they get really you know nervous to be up there with with some pros. And some people get their pro card and they never compete. Yeah, because they're I've seen that a lot. I've seen they're that a lot. Or they them. spend they spend so long pursuing it. By the time they get it, they're burnt out. Yeah. 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 Um, you seen that meme where it's like it's it's a lineup of guys on stage and there's this one guy that doesn't look like he's been in the gym and he has no tan or anything like that and he's just standing there with his deer in headlights look on his face yep. it's like if i got a pro card i feel like that's exactly how i would feel and look on a pro stage <laughs> like that's i would be that really guy. Good. That's, a, that's a very good assessment of how it feels i mean that's how that's how i felt when i got there i, I mean i'm like oh my god i'm standing next to these girls that have been at the Arnold and the Olympia because you're mm-hmm. just up there in a lineup and then they do their call outs from there. And if you get called out next to some of them, you're like, Oh my God, it's like surreal. But then again, you have to realize that's see, you put people on, people put people on pedestals. Mm-hmm. I think that's the problem because you start to look at pros and, and other, you know, different categories in your life. Like you, you know, you start as an amateur and then you become a pro. It's like, that's what you worked for. So you're here now. So you have to recognize that and believe it. Like you, you, you got the card, you earned it. Yeah, you're yeah. there. Yeah. So there, there's, you're really a pro. There's really no easy pro card wins. Well, no. there, ca- there has been. There, there, there might be. Been. Yeah. <laughs> but but not usually like you know the, you'll get somebody who they they show up and uh, it's one of those underrepresented classes usually like you know women's bodybuilding where for some reason you know a few years back there was maybe two women in a show and the top one yeah. was a pro card or something like like okay you know but still you're still a pro so um own it enjoy it live in the moment That's right what i say live in the moment you yeah. know, if you if you take a year off and work towards be going on stage, that's a good that's a good thing you can do. You know, what did you do pro, after you got your card? Took a year off. Yeah, and worked and worked for it. I think that's so pretty that normal. Like, yeah, I think that's good. But some people jump right into it and then they get their butt handed to them. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, because basically you could have turned pro in a national level stage and not realizing that you need more back width or a little more density in your hamstring or something like that. And you just go and jump into it. And then you notice, wow, these people really put time in and they've already competed on, you know, these prestigious stages like the Arnold or the Olympia. And they, they have the full development, especially if they were winning their class or even top five at those shows. Yeah. And especially if like, if you just got your pro card and you're up on stage and a lot of the other people up there have been, you know, this is their 10th, 15th pro show. It's like, right. Like, you, you, you belong up there, but they are on a different level. Yeah. They're, they have a more complete physique because they have listened to judges tell them what they want at that level. So they know I need to open my lats like this because this is how the judges want you to pose as a pro. You go in as a pro, you might not be posing the way they've been told because it's a different, it's, it's a different communication between the judges as well. I mean, even when you're on stage, which was really weird for me, when they call you, they actually call you by your first name on some, on some shows. Hmm. They don't call you by number. I would not so expect that. Like, that would throw me for a loop. Yeah, it did. It does. Because <laughs> one of them was like, Kelly, please switch. I'm like, I, I think I'm the only one. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm number 37. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. So like, right. So you're, so it's like, it's completely throws you for a loop, but it makes you realize, Oh my God, I'm on a first name basis now. Like okay. these people know who I am. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> <laughs> Except yeah, you do. It's really cool. You do. You don't it's, feel like you do, but you do. It's cool. Yeah. And it's, it's like, you know, I'm just going to go through real quick. Um, yeah. A couple of the girls that I competed with last year and they were in my lineup, in my call out. One of them just won, uh, I think it was Tampa Pro uh, and she's doing the Olympia. Another them, one of them won Miami and I was in between them in the center in their call out last year. So it just goes to show you that they didn't, none of us qualified for the Olympia or Arnold, but they are now going to that show. So a lot can happen in a year. That's the, that's the thing. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, you can't always base your success off of, you know, one year that you compete and maybe you didn't do as good as you'd hope. And then you just give up. It's just like, it's just, 
it's just a process. And well, it depends. And- one thing that I think that if you get up to the pro level and you, you know, take a, a finish like that, a second or a third call out or something like that, you know, at an NPC level at an amateur level, I think, you know, that, that kind of stings at the pro level. You're like, okay, well, the level of competition here is several notches up, but also at that point, if you've earned your card, you're familiar with the process and you know what it takes to improve. Like at the amateur level, you'll find a lot of people that prep for a show and then really just kind of half ass for a while. Don't really do much. And then, Oh, it's time to prep for a show again. Cool. But they're not really putting in the time to improve. And when you get to the pro level, I think pretty much everybody understands how important that is. And you kind of see like a lot can change in a year if you really bust your ass. And you also have a firsthand view of what happens when you really bust your ass. Like you right. know, see those people who go from uh, in your call out up to Olympia qualified in a year and it kind of makes you like, Oh fuck. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a lot of, it's just like, you know, it could be stress in your life at that point. Who knows? You know, maybe you're not exercising as hard as you could have, could be. Yeah. Maybe you're not dieting as hard as you could be. You don't know. Yeah. 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 Um, here was another one, and I think this is interesting, and I have some thoughts on this. I'm curious to hear yours. Um, mm-hmm. There's a few different parts to this question. Um, how do you judge, or do you judge, and if you do, how, um, a client's genetic potential, especially early on? I have an answer for that. Let's hear it. Structure. I look at someone's structure. I can literally look at a body, and I look at their shoulder width right away. I look from their neck to their shoulders. I look at the chest. I basically look at structure. And I can usually see it even in clothes. And so what, just to clarify, because some people are going to ask about this, like, and maybe you should clarify for me also. When you say structure, more than anything else, I think about bones. That's what I'm thinking. That's what okay. I'm trying to say. So yeah. I'm talking about the shoulder width, like the bone structure. So you can see somebody's shoulders. So as a coach, you've been coaching for a long time. You can tell when someone's muscles are hanging on their shoulders like you can mm-hmm. see a delt or you can see no delts so if somebody comes and they have no delts but they have wide shoulders i'm like oh my god they have a lot of potential because they can mm-hmm. just build this up and once that's built you can see the bone like the the base of like the muscle what the muscles are going to look like or where they're going to be if they have this wide shoulder you know and on this or if they have a, like a really nice clavicle i can usually tell and i could tell by someone's chest wall also through someone's shirt, you know, if someone's wide or they have wide lats Some people mm-hmm. that are gymnasts come to me and I'm like, Oh my God, you have a back. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, no, trust me. <laughs> I can see it. See it. Or quad. Like I can see the legs too. Like the leg development. If someone has like really genetic quads or really great hamstrings, I point it out normally. And, and they're usually weirded out because they're like, what are you talking about? Because <laughs> I can see it. Torso too. I also can see torso size. I'm sure you can too. Long and short. You know, long and short. And that it's going to change when they come down for a show. You're going to be, able, I mean, everybody's built different. So it's just, everybody can do this if they want to. I say most people can do it. Mm-hmm. Most people can go far. It's just the time that it takes that yeah. you get to put in. Yeah. My, my answer on that one is a little bit different. Like I look at all that stuff as well. And I'm also looking at someone's potential for muscle development. Like if somebody says, you know, I've been training for 15 years, blah, 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 blah. Like I need to see in your photos, some evidence that backs that up. And if I don't, that's a knock on your potential because it's, it's not just, um, bone structure and proportions, but it's how easily can you grow? Um, but at the same time, maybe they've been training for 15 years and just like completely bullshitting their way through their workouts with no idea what they're That's really what doing. That's what I was going to say. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. Like maybe they've been doing it entirely wrong. Maybe they haven't been doing anything very effective. Um, right. And the, the, the real thing that seals the deal here is discipline. And so I almost think like, you know, genetic potential is almost a worthless conversation. Show me you're disciplined and then I'll tell you if your potential is, is good or not. Um, right. because if you don't have the discipline to follow a diet, but you've got the greatest structure in the world, who gives a shit, you know, you're never going to get anywhere. A hundred percent agree with that one. Yeah. But if you've got all the discipline in the world and you've got some genetic structural flaws, um, you can still do some stuff, you know, it's going to be yeah. a, a tough thing to compete at a high level, but you know, you can, you can still make some noise. Mm-hmm. I, I agree. 
do you have a, a an easy time relatively you know identifying somebody who you think is is going to struggle like if forget the discipline part of it but just as far as like you know their ability to build grow etc lean out like some people are just generally like a little doughy or something like that you have a pretty easy time identifying those people and do you tell them that up front or do you not want to plant the seed in their yeah. head well no i won't tell them up front what i do is i when when somebody does check-ins or they first talk to me or discuss like we have like a you know our initial consultation type of thing um the person that told me that they had a coach or had a trainer they left the trainer because they weren't getting in shape um they couldn't do it because of this or that i are you talking about like men mentality um or physique? well I, I was thinking physique but let's go mentality as well let's do both okay so I can tell when someone tells me that they've jumped around a lot, that mm -hmm. that typically is a flag um, because they don't have the discipline or the accountability, their own self accountability. To the problem is with the coach, not with them. Yeah. Like, cause if you, it's your perceived effort as well. So if you go and you're like, so let's say you're doing orange theory or like one of these, one of these uh, like Peloton bike or whatever, and you get in great shape because you have the willpower like that's because of your willpower you know you could have a trainer and you can go there i had a client four days a week come to me and every time we'd go through a workout she would tell me i don't want to do that today i'm like well we're going to anyway and she'd fight me and she'd like lay on the equipment thinking it's funny and i'm like what do you want to train today and she's like arms i'm like well we know we're not going to get in shape if we just train your arms today because it's easy She's like, I don't want to do legs. I'm like, well, we're going to do legs. And I would put her through a leg workout and basically do the whole workout for her. And she wanted to pay me for this. I don't know why. And, you know, to this day, I still question that whole thing. But I had her for like four years. And it was, she loved me. I don't know if it was because I'm our sarcasm. I don't know. That's four years that would she, test my sanity. I don't know if I can hang did, with that. It did. Yeah. We, but she did, she did get in shape because I did force her through reps, but it worked me out a lot too. You know, I mean, I yeah. was getting like a second workout, but what I, what I noticed with her is that she needed that constant, like reassurance and push and she didn't want to do it. She didn't have the self-discipline. So if she's not with me, you know, she wasn't working out like that was her thing. So mm -hmm. I think that's a thing that people have to, you know, when you're, when you're, potential and you're looking for potential in a, in a client, it's like, how hard are they willing to push themselves? You can usually see by their uh, initial consultation or whatever, they, they'll tell you like they've jumped people or they've left co coaches, left trainers. Um, they can't stay on track around two o'clock PM. They get really bad cravings and they can't help that. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you, you definitely have problems with discipline. <laughs> and, oh, I have to have wine every night. Like I have to have my wine. What yeah. can I do to have my wine? Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I had one client back in the day who was just, you know, genetically, she was just very gifted. She was about 50 um, and had worked out pretty regularly and decided that she wanted to compete. Um, but she was a doctor. She had a very stressful job. And she was, God, she's yeah. like, I've got to have a scotch every night. I'm like, yeah, that's not going to work. And so the problem was like she had good enough genetics it didn't matter and she entered her first show and won it and because it was a natural organization you can actually win a pro card in your first show which let's just talk about how stupid that is um right. so she competed once and became a pro and i just saw that as a giant red flag and i told her i'm like congratulations on that but i'm not going to do this with you again if we're going to do that again because i don't want you skating by on your genetics like if you're going to do this i want you putting in the work and i want you doing more i want you showing more discipline i know i'm telling the doctor about discipline here but you know i'm the coach so deal with it um yep. and we did not continue after that so <laughs> i i drew a line and she's like nope i'm not going to do it i'm like all right cool that's that <laughs> but that's I, felt, I felt good about it though because it's like, you know, basically you've got good enough genetics. You don't need me for this. Like if you want to have your drink every night and follow the diet 70% of the way and, and you know, like whatever, you don't, you don't need a coach. You know, if you want to get exactly serious about right. it. That's, what, that's exactly right. Yeah. I've had those too. And I think it's just all comes down. Honest, honestly, success comes down to your discipline and how hard you work. Yeah. It does. Like, you know, I mean, and structure. 
if somebody like a coach gives you a structured plan and and diet and if you want to go and try to do what you've been doing or whatever or something that somebody else told you to do while you're working with this person you're going to get confused and it, it might throw your progress off too i think a lot of people start to go this is too hard this is too regimented i can't do this and they'll tell you at check-in they followed it but they didn't yeah. you know they're lying and you can tell themselves they're, yeah, and a lot of people lie to themselves because they don't, they don't really want to follow that restriction, restriction or that uh, repetitious. Oh, I got to check in. Oh God, you know. I mean, they're not going to tell you that, but they that happens a lot. Well, and I, I had one guy the other day. I, I won't call him out by name, but he, if he's listening, he knows who he is because I called him out on his check in. I've worked with him on two occasions. Uh, I'm pretty sure for over a year on, on both occasion. And on his check-in day, he sent me his, uh, his updated tracking sheet. And he said, I just forgot to take pics. I'm like, dude, we've been checking in for over two years. You didn't forget shit. You just didn't take them because you didn't want to. You didn't like, take them you didn't don't want to. lie to me. You <laughs> don't tell me you forgot. You ate a pizza. <laughs> you know, it. you did something bad. Well, and he did too. <laughs> He, that's the thing. He copped to that, but he's like, I'm not going to take pictures, basically. But, oh, I forgot. Yeah, sure you did, buddy. Uh-huh. Because you're, because you're judging his physique. So you're going to be like, oh, I can see it now. See, people think, oh, okay, if I don't send pictures, I can get rid of it in a couple of days. So they're not going to be able to tell. I'll yeah. tell them I ate it, but you don't have to tell me because you're going to see it. So you don't, I don't have to be re reminded that I screwed up as bad as I did. Yeah, if, if I really screwed up, then I shouldn't have to tell you. You should just be able to see it in my photos. So... This is a, this is a test for you, coach. It's like exactly. Yeah, I'm not down with that kind of game playing. I don't have time for no, that. No, you don't have time for that. <laughs> Darren does not have time for that. No, hell no. Do I, am I remembering correctly? I think you said um, some time back. I don't know if it's still true that I'm the only one of your clients that does macros. No, God, no. Oh not. no. Oh, okay. I thought no, it was. You, I said you are the only person, the only person that is as detailed. You oh. are so detailed, which is awesome. Well, I try. <laughs> I, no, I thought for some reason that you, you like do meal plans for everybody. And I, I remember when I, when I first came to you, I'm like, I won't follow a meal plan. Like I'll, I'll do macros, um, but I will not follow a meal plan. I will suck at that. No, 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 no. Yeah. Okay. You're, no, there's a lot of people that do macros because cool. it, it's easier. No, you're, you're extremely, you're ex extremely um, accountable. That's, that's what you are, and I think that's what you expect from everybody that you work with. Got to set an example. Yeah, you do. But I think <laughs> by nature you're very you're very uh, regimented, and you're you're a numbers guy. It's engineering school. Yeah. See. Yeah. But that that's that what... gives you that, that's see, but that's good. Yeah. But that it's really good. No, no one would ever want to drive over a bridge that I designed. But as far as like macro precision, yeah, I, I got that down to a down to a T. No oh, problems. please, you have a you have a full garage that you pose in. That you got all that stuff. You make stuff in the house. You made your desk. Yeah, but it's not a bridge but, that anybody's driving over. <laughs> there's there's no lives on the line out in the garage. <laughs> so is that when you stopped? You know, going. You didn't want to do engineering. Is when you realized that you don't want to design a bridge. Well, I did. I just didn't want to, uh, I didn't like the, um, lifestyle of a civil engineer, like the work lifestyle of basically it's like, okay, you're working as part of a firm. And I mean, it's not like I'm against teamwork or anything like that, but it's, it was far too collaborative of a process. Um, there's far too many people and conflicting ideas um, in play. And I also realized that everything that I was going to school for and learning was all done by computers. And I didn't need to know any of it except to know how to, you know, see if the stuff that the computer spat out was in the ballpark of being correct. So it, it just felt like a giant waste of time. And I, I did an internship also that w in a uh, company that was falling apart from the inside. So there was a lot of like infighting and conflict. It was just a really unpleasant place to be. Um, so it was not a good initiation into the engineering work environment either. So I have, I have a question for you. Uh oh, okay. I'm ready. Turning into a reverse podcast. <laughs> okay. Do you think that, okay, there is no I in team, but this is an individual sport. Do you believe mm -hmm. in that in this sport, do you believe in teams or do you believe that it's coach client? individual on an individual basis can i say both you, you believe in both 
Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's absolutely coach client, but I like the idea of a team just because, especially as an online coach, um, there's no geographic commonality. Like I don't have a team of people that are all training at the same gym who get to know each other. And so having some kind of a team that you can unite on social media under a hashtag or something like that, okay. um, kind of creates, uh, Modern, some kind of like a, a, a dollar store version of that camaraderie. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not the same thing, but if you can follow people and uh, watch their journey when they're working with the same coach that you are, that's cool. Like I do that with you. I don't know any of your clients, but I follow them anyway and I, I see what they're doing and it, it's cool. So um, I, I would say, because also I'm, I'm definitely a bit of a loner. Like I don't feel like super close to any of those people. Like, yeah, we're on I the same loner. team. Um, but it, it gives you, people to watch that are going through, you know, they're being coached by the same person you are. So there's a little bit of like unity there, which is cool. Right. Well, here's my thing what, that I, I want to say about that mm -hmm. because I think it's important for people to understand that bodybuilding is very individual. Everybody's story is unique and you're, you're like, if you had a team and one team member wins overall for the show and you have people that are jealous on that team at that show, they're going to think that the coach, gave that person more privilege or sometimes F favored you know, them in some way, favored, favored them, which is not true. Right. And if someone put the effort in and they got there, that does not necessarily mean that they were, they had more privilege. But well, let's just say, we hope that's not true. There are probably cases right. where it is true. <laughs> yeah, that could be true. But that's why I always tell people that, you know, you have a group of people that I coach. Yes. But you can, you can befriend them. Like that's fine. They could be your support system. It's more of a support thing, I think. Yeah. Um, but I think going in as a team to shows, like a, you know, like everybody wearing this or whatever. Like in my a click. Opinion, yeah, it's like, like a click. Like a fucking West Side Story or something. Jets yeah. and Sharks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I look at it more like, you know, bodybuilding is like going in and they're, you know, the, the Olympics is like a gymnast team. How they all perform individually, but they're on the same team for like the USA yeah. type of thing. Yeah, And then you have group sports. This is not a team sport. So I always tell people, you know, your teammate isn't, they can help you and motivate you maybe to get, you know, to your show, but there's no team sport you're playing here where you're, you guys, you know, have to p pass the ball to somebody or something. It's there's not no like interaction that. with your teammate. There's no interaction with your teammate. When you're on stage, you're competing against your teammate. So <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why I have a hard time when you know when I've done shows and of course the, I have a team there it's like I just have to remind people that this is very individual so you can pull motivation and you know support from people like I said but I think it's it really comes from in, your intrinsic motivation and your communication with your coach yeah have you had that happen before where you've got um, multiple clients in a show and they end up on stage at the same time competing against yeah. each other yeah. Very often, very often. Yeah. That, that's interesting. You know, because, um, I mean, you, you, you work with a fair number of people who are local to you. Um, like, I mean, you've got clients everywhere, but you've got, uh, I, I'd say like, I don't know, a, a good concentration in the Tampa area or at least like the central Florida area. Right. I've had, cause I've, I've coached a lot of people in the, in the Florida area from the, from the get go, mm -hmm. um, that I have people here in the past, like in, 2013 and 2015 I used to go to the shows and do it so that that's why and I used to train people in the area which I don't do as much training in person anymore um, but that's why they would actually come to me so we would go to shows and it would be people I posed or people that I trained and Florida's high is a high concentration of competitors anyway yeah. so I had get a lot of Florida competitors too and yeah, that I would have, have like bikini girls on stage and, it, you know, there'd be competitors that wanted me to be back there or pay for the pass for the coach pass themselves for me to be there. And I'm like, I have like 10 people in the show. I can't be there just for you. It's not, it's not fair to them. You know, in that case, do you usually want to be out in the audience? Like I do. Watching? And I'm usually in the audience. Yes. Yeah. And then that's how I work. You know, I just, I'd rather see how they perform on stage so I can correct things versus like being backstage holding your hand when by that point you should already know what you're doing. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and if your nerves are shot, you know, everybody else's nerves are shot too. You just got to go out there and do your best. Yeah. That's why. 
it, it's funny because I, I only work online, so I have nobody in the Tennessee area, in the Knoxville area that I, I work with. So my clients are all over the place. So it's very, very rare that I ever get people that are in the same show. And usually when it happens, you know, to be honest, I only find out about it like the day of the show or the day before because, you know, I don't care what the name of the show is or where it is because I'm not going to be there. I care about the date and like the structure and the organization of it. So once I start digging into like the flyer for the show and the order of events, I'm like, wait, I just saw this the other day. And then I realized that, oh, they're doing the same show as this person here. Like I didn't even realize they both lived in Wisconsin. Oh, okay, cool. You know, because you know, someone's geography doesn't really matter too much to me um, if they aren't in my immediate. That was, that was like the recent, the recent one with Romy and yeah. my client Martha. I didn't even know. Like I didn't know they were doing that same show. And I guess yeah, they so my, my them. client, my client Romy, who you who worked with you for posing. Yeah. And and then your client, they both ended up at the same show in Oklahoma and didn't know it until they were there together. And how did they yeah. find out? I don't remember well, how that because, went down. Because, because Theron saw that I posted a picture of Martha and he's like, oh my God, that girl was at your show. And she's like, oh my God, we clicked right away, her and I. They didn't even know it that day. <laughs> I was like, wow. But that just means that their personalities got along, which was that, good. That's hilarious. Yeah, I, I did that's have... I did have two uh, two friends who um, who trained with me. They're best friends in Georgia, and they they set the goal of doing the same show together. Um, and they're both competing in figure. Thankfully, they were not the same height class. Um, but unfortunately, it was a fairly small show. They both won their class, so then they had to go against each other for the overall. And there were just two classes, so it was just the two of them against each other for the oh. overall for figure. <laughs> but yeah. um, the cool thing is, like, they loved it. They thought it was the coolest thing. Like they didn't give a crap who won. Um, Cause they'd been in it. They'd been training together the whole time. So it was actually a really, really cool thing. So um, yeah, it was kind of funny though. <laughs> but did you not train people in person at one point? Yeah. 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 Um, uh, when I was in Oregon, um, I trained at a studio. I was not there training for too long. That was my first training gig. Um, before I moved to North Carolina and then, uh, I was in Asheville, North Carolina training there. And I, that's when I really wanted to like get into contest prep specifically. The problem is Asheville is like a hippie vacation town. Not a lot of bodybuilders there. Um, I did have, uh, a, a couple people that I worked with in person for competition prep there. Um, but that's when I started the online business. So, um, yeah, so pre pretty limited, in working with people in person for competition prep, just because I never really lived in a place where there was very many competitors. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And now in Knoxville, I'm like, you know, if I wanted to do that in person, like, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I know they're around. I don't see them. They're not in the gyms that I go to, or maybe not when I'm there. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. See? I don't know. I don't know. I always think like, you know, when, when I go into the, the my usual gym, um, you know, this is no, no big ego on me, but I'm usually the biggest guy in there. And I'm like, mm, that's not a good sign. Like uh, <laughs> if, if I'm the Are biggest guy in your gym, your, 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 your gym has some issues. Was it like one or two people there during the day? No, it's usually pretty <laughs> packed, but it's a whole bunch of skinny college kids. Um, oh, let's, let's talk about those. No, or, or like, you know, um, you know, uh, overweight weekend warrior types. Um, I saw this one guy there the other day who just absolutely cracked me up. He was this, I mean, you know, again, no judgment, but very overweight guy. Kudos to him for being in the gym. You know, I could care less, but he was curling in the squat rack and he had on a tank that said, fuck average. Oh, oh no. I'm like, dude, you are the very definition of average right now. <laughs> and first of all, you're curling in the squat rack, mister. Yeah. That, that was, that was the biggest offense right there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. And like he was doing curls in the dumbbell rack and then he walked over right next to where I was deadlifting to the other rack and grabbed the bar and just started curling. I'm like, oh, okay, That's maybe he's just on his way to the bathroom. He's doing a set of curls or something like that. But no, then he starts throwing plates on. I'm like, really? You, you are a living gym cliche right now. Like, You know why? Because it's lazy. Yeah, super lazy. Yeah. Because the bar is really right there. So it's like easier. It's like, you That's know fine. what you should do is go curl at the decline bench station because nobody ever uses that and it's just as convenient. There you go. I'm just saying. 
I'm just saying. You should walk around and be the, you should be the gym police. I would love to be the gym police. If I could just get a pass and make it so that like nobody could beat me up or anything like that. Like there's a bubble around <laughs> me and I could just call yeah, people bubble. out on their stupid shit. Give me a megaphone. Um, and I could just sneak up oh, behind people be and say that form sucks. And you know I mean, what? That oh, is actually... I love that. That's my dream job. You should actually start doing that just randomly go to gyms and just wear like a helmet and a megaphone, bring that in. I actually cussed at a guy the and other day. Your headband. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it was all for naught because he had headphones in and he couldn't hear me. Um, but uh, he was he was on the leg press, like the plate loaded leg press. And he had like 600 pounds on there doing calf raises. Oh, God. And at the last one, he dropped that thing so hard. I thought he broke the life fitness leg press. And I turned around and looked at him. And I said, what the fuck are you doing? Headphones in, couldn't hear me. I'm like, OK, I'm just going to drop it. Let it go. But I mean, it absolutely scared the shit out of me. Like I thought the machine broke. He dropped it so hard. Like, it's absolutely just like a, hey, I'm done with this set. Everybody look at me kind of movement. Well, I'm glad he had it locked in. God, that was bad. Yeah, well, and the thing is, he does that after every set. Like, oh. that, that, that's his thing. He is loud gym guy. He's one of those things. <laughs> yeah. He's one He's of those ca- guys. Captain, look at me. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> like, hey, did you see how much I just calf raised? Yes. Yeah. I'm a me. boss. I own this gym. I am a boss. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, uh. What, what do you got going on the rest of the year? You got any big plans? Just working on business stuff, yeah. you know? I mean, and, and watching Darren get on stage. Mm, don't watch too close. Might see something you don't like. Are you going to wear your headband? I, I'm, I'm thinking headbands and sandals, maybe. Um, although, I don't know if you noticed. You didn't comment on it, but I'm sure you noticed. When we posed on Monday, um, I did not wear the sandals. You know what? I did not notice. I did not wear the sandals because I was out in the driveway and I swept it off first. So, because I don't like stepping on little I'll, little like rocks and stuff out there. But yeah, I have to admit I did not notice that. Yeah, That's terrible. It snuck by you, huh? It snuck huh. by me. You're waiting for that. You're like, you're I, I was like, she's gonna say out. something. She's gonna say something. She's gonna say something. And then by the end of it, I'd lost like seven pounds in sweat and I just didn't give a shit anymore. So you know why? <laughs> it's because your your physique. I was more focused on watching you pose than your and your sandals. Yeah, Darren. like wow, look at this chunder head thinking he can transition here, man. So you were you're flowing pretty good. I don't know, it it just feels so I mean, I know it's supposed to feel unnatural, but it really does and it really doesn't feel like I have a hang on it. And I look at the picks and I'm like I just want to pick them apart. I'm like, nah, I don't like that angle there and I've hit you're it right really before fluid. this doesn't you're look really right. You're really fluid. You're really fluid, but I, what I will say is that you do tend to look around when you're posing in the gym even even in that room yeah when you send me a video you look around yeah you, i don't know if you want you're like oh my god if people think i'm i'm, I'm an idiot for posing yes 100 you're, thinking something. you're That's thinking something i could see it you're thinking too hard yeah. don't think don't think okay i'll work on that i, 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 I have people come when they come and pose there's some people that come and pose. I gotta say this. This is cool. This is cool. So whenever you pose, this goes for anybody that's gonna pose. If you have that that posing presentation, like you're where you're almost in alter ego mode, and like you come at me and you're staring me down like I am the judge and you own this this show, and I'm literally just sitting in the gym watching you and you make me go like this because i'm just like oh my god <laughs> like it's that is the coolest feeling ever when somebody like literally locks eyes and goes to their posing so flawlessly and doesn't even think about what they're doing it's like the coolest feeling for the the person in the audience it's the coolest thing so if you practice that it's pretty amazing what it does to the person watching i've literally gone like this i'm like whoa and as soon as they're done, I, I get chills and I start sweating, but not like in a way where it's like that embarrassment thing. It's almost like you just stole, you just stole my soul. Like that was cool. But kind like, of oh my God. Like I just, it's like when you're at a concert and everybody's like, oh my God. And they're singing lyrics because that person, somebody that they love, that the performer can feel that and you can feel that. And it's like this, this like nonverbal, you know, I don't know 
what it is, but it, yeah. it, it just, it just really grabs somebody's attention in a way that like, it almost makes you want to pick that person to win. Interesting. They interesting. Just own it. So it, it's really about mm-hmm. like kind of, kind of settling into that character where it's like, you know, you, you've got to, and this is one thing that I, I don't do. And I, I think I would struggle with, but I'm going to try it is settle into that character where you are like, I am a bodybuilder. This is what I do. I'm doing my thing. Check this out. Yeah. And, and just like everything else goes away completely. And you're just totally focused on presenting yourself and without overthinking it. Right. Like I am Darren Starr. I have a band. <laughs> Such as it is a two person band. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I have a podcast. I'm a coach. <laughs> That's all the shit I want to forget about. I don't check think about out like, check out this side chest that I got. Exactly, because it's all I got going for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's my my one money shot. That's it. It's literally like that. You're supposed to walk out there feeling like this is it. This is this. You guys are looking at me, and I won this. That's how you have to kind of be. Like, yeah. you have to feel like you own it, and the a, way a you little own fool it, yourself a little bit. I feel like it's more of confidence. Like you go out there and you basically go in like you're gonna you're gonna win this today like you're going to meet that person and connect with them like no matter what it is you got to be in that mindset like you know it's like the ultimate sale you're selling yourself yeah you're selling yourself to the judges you're selling yourself exactly to the it, 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 you're posing your posing presentation is your sales pitch it's almost like when you like communicate and you look somebody in the eye and like mm-hmm. you sell them with your yeah. vision your eyes and your in your smile and like you connect so much that you literally get into their soul because you can you can feel their them go like this. They smile back at you. It's like that automatic, you know. You, you know, I had connection. I've had like one experience in my life that I can remember like that. And not to get all political or anything, but it was the one time that I met Barack Obama in person. Oh yeah. And I, I was in a handshake line, and he was just walking through the line, shaking everybody's hands, but. When he stopped for three seconds to say hi to me and shake my hand, I swear to God, it was like I was the only person in his world for those three seconds. Like he was nowhere else. It was right there. And he did that with every single person. Yes. Do you see what I'm saying? And I was just like, wow, that was interesting. You know why? (laughs) There was, I I guess, I bet you, because I've seen his performance. There's three things that are, that are very important. First, it's locking the eyes. You know, and then you're going to go in for like a confident handshake and Mm -hmm. then it's a smile. Yeah. So it's that feeling of, hey, I'm here. I'm happy to talk to you. I'm happy to look at you. I'm happy to perform for you. You know, you don't have to stare in a creepy way, but it's like a it's like a genuine like you're you're here. You're human. I'm giving you my time type of thing or you're, you know, it's exactly how it felt. And the trick is, I'm sure it's the last place on earth he wanted to be. Um, right. But it didn't feel like it. Like it didn't feel fake or forced or anything like that. It's like no. totally locked in and just like, you know, a hundred of those in two or three minutes, just one after right. the other. Crazy. He knows you're there to see him. He knows yeah. you're there to see him. You're there to, you're there to connect with him. And he knows that. So he knows that in those moments, he's got to perform for you and you're there to go, wow. You know, just like if people go as competitors, let's use them. They go on stage, the judges are there, the audience is there, they're paying. The judges are there sitting there all night looking at a gazillion people that they don't really want to. <laughs> so in that moment, give them give them at least a little smile or something worth watching. That's what I think when I'm on stage. Yeah. I'm gonna give them give them something worth watching. That's and cool. it's connecting with your face, smiling at you. And I'm might be checked out mentally, but I'm at least looking like I'm not. So on this episode of the drop set, what a bodybuilder can learn from Barack Obama. There you go. I didn't think we'd get there, but there there we are. You know, you look there and just, you took a different spin on this one. Yeah. (laughs) You never know where it's going to go. You don't. Um, Any, any parting shots for us here? No, all I want to say is, you know, I think that, Anybody that wants to get on stage, anybody that wants to compete, you could take a lot from, you know, 
people that have been in this industry like you and I for a long time that, you know, if you just follow something, stick to it, don't overthink it, you know, don't worry about how people are going to look at you, follow a plan, just, just do this as if it's like something you just chose to, you know, find that goal that you want, just, just put it in, put it in paper and make it happen. I got to tell you, I'm bummed that today is a rest day for me because I'm I'm fired up. I'm ready to go do some shit right now. You see, yeah. that's the whole thing. Yeah. Hmm. So thanks for that. See, I, I have to wait till tomorrow, but I'll be even more rested then and ready to go. I haven't had a day off in a week, so I needed it. Can't you go play some play some something on your piano or something? Well, I've got uh, I've actually got to do some drum editing for a song uh, that I'm working on. So. Um, not my posing music, but something else. Um, well, that's good too. That's good too, Darren. And another thing for people that are listening, you got to also think about having balance so that if you put everything into this all the time, you can get burnout. Just like we yeah. we're talking about people that try to pursue their pro card for so long and then they get on stage or they don't want to get on stage because they're so burnt out after chasing that. And they, they finally get their pro card. If you have other things that kind of give you a little bit of balance, a little bit of it creates more spice when you train like you don't feel as like mundane doing this day because you haven't out. been thinking about this for 24 hours straight you give your, you got to give your brain a break as well Correct. as your body yeah so i have to sometimes detach let go take a day off do something completely outside of bodybuilding i like it i'm gonna go build a boat which i might need because it's been we've been Wait, getting like flood like rains second. here yeah but you you won't build a bridge, but you'll build a boat. And you're gonna trust the boat. I didn't say that. <laughs> this is a boat that I intend to drown in. So <laughs> it's the only kind of boat I know how to build. I did at well, one point I, think that I wanted to build a wooden boat. Like that was uh, that was uh, a, a dream of mine. And then I realized, no, it's not. Don't do that. <laughs> isn't that desk you're sitting on one that something you built? This one is not. Um, that one that you can't see in the dark back there is. It. Yeah, that's my that's my um, recording workstation back there. So I did build that that's one. Impressive. That's impressive. I, I, I got to tell you, I, I'm happy with the design. It's very functional as well. Um, I'm pretty happy with that one, considering it and cost if about. Interested. Yeah, I'm not building one for you. No, <laughs> sorry. I, I had a friend who asked me to build one. I'm like, no, no. Because if you buy one of those desks, you can because you can buy recording mixing workstation desks custom, and they run you like fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred bucks usually. Because there's a lot of custom shit built into it. That one cost me about one hundred and eighty dollars in parts, and took me like three days to build. So, um, yeah, it was a pain. It was like three days straight of nothing but that. So, not something I would do during prep. <laughs> yeah, that's when he was saying that he's like, "Oh, I can't train today because I have to." build my desk yeah because my my, my home gym is uh it's just desk pieces right now all over the garage i can't, floor. Pose. I can't pose today because i have to build my desk kelly yeah yeah that Remember didn't last for too days? long though yeah i think that was only one week mm -hmm. yeah but it did happen yep <laughs> <laughs> all right well kelly thanks right. i appreciate it um i'm Thank gonna uh, uh, hang with me for a second here i'm gonna say bye to everybody in podcast land um we'll be back uh we're continuing the string of interviews here and as always if anybody has any suggestions for people you'd like me to reach out to and invite on the show let me know in the meantime peace out y'all <laughs> <laughs>